Hi there, my friend and friends. I created whatever this is a few days ago, uh, and it wasn't at all what I set out to create. And actually, I was trying to do something completely different than what you see here right now. Uh, and I ran into a whole bunch of problems along the way, and it wasn't working at all what I wanted to do. And so I sort of created or started playing around with a few things to see if I couldn't get, you know, just understand why what I was doing wasn't working and it somehow evolved into what we see here, which is, I guess, kind of neat. It's a little bit of a happy accident that we fell, I fell into, I guess, with it. Now, I have no idea what I actually plan to do with this thing. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes. And I also had no plans to actually make a video on this because I don't really have a practical application for it right now. But I did share it on social media just because I thought it looked cool and a lot of people really liked it. And then I got to thinking a little bit of not only is it cool and I think it'd be fun just to share because it's it's neat, I guess, uh, but also because I think there's actually some things we can learn along the way here in how I made it and also the importance of things like experimentation. So how did we even get here in the first place? What, what led me down this path? And the first thing was I wanted to do a video on mix blend mode. And so what I'd actually done is I didn't have a lot of ideas because I wanted something a bit more practical than just like here's a few random boxes. So I came over to CodePen and I said, uh, let me look up a mix blend mode because people make all sorts of crazy and cool things and I saw this one which is a one that I knew well and we'll take a look at it um, and this neon one here and sort of poked around but these were the two that sort of grabbed my attention the most uh, this one I like because they actually share how they did it and they had an improved version but what's cool here is you see like they have you know this this cool effect that's going on it looks really neat and they did it with color dodge but they're sort of showing that they have these different layers they have one layer that's the sparkles that we can see that are being animated uh, they have another layer that's sort of this gradient like that but then when you put that gradient with the color dodge it creates this cool thing I'm like oh that that's kind of neat but I don't want to copy this idea uh, and the other one that I saw was this one which um, I didn't want to recreate exactly this either, but this one got me thinking uh, a little bit and sort of like I had like this idea of the layers from here and then I had this idea from this one. I was like, would be really cool because you can see the glowy thing going and I had an idea of how they did that. And so what I started thinking of was, could I do it where I'd be scrolling down and having the colors sort of like change on the side of a card or something that's, that's not moving a position fixed or position sticky that has that sort of this this neon-y effect, but only as you scroll down, be a little bit more subtle, and I thought it could be really fun. Uh, so I actually tried doing that, and you can see <laughs> I had my, my first phase here. Uh, I have my color, uh, my color burn, I'll turn off the color burn here for a second, because basically what it is, I put this gradient in the background um, that I made really big. We can make that a bit smaller. I just wanted a whole bunch of colors in the background, basically. So, like I could give it that height of 100 VH, so it would be much bigger. And then this element here, this part of it would stay there as we scroll down. Um, but the problem was, and it wouldn't even be necessarily on this one, but I was playing around with position sticky to get it to work. And uh, actually, we'll, we'll turn this one on. We'll put the, the color burn on first. <laughs> and the problem is, when the color burns on, I can get this effect because I have the other um, element. We're going to see a little bit more how I did this in a second. But as soon as I do a position sticky, it breaks the entire thing. Um, we, we lose this because we can't color burn with that because the position, the way position sticky works um, and, and mixed blend modes work, and it would be the same with position fixed, um, where I, I couldn't do it. It just it didn't work, and that in initial idea sort of fell out the window. And that's okay, because we're actually going to come back to this, because I played around with it a little bit more. This is where I hit that moment of like, well, how can I, or, or not even how can I do it, is just like this idea of something moving and changing possible. So that's why I came up with the idea of something that would just follow my cursor around, because then I could just experiment, I could move my cursor around a little bit. Um, so actually, I put a cursor none here, because I wanted to create this fake cursor instead. Um, but basically, let's let's follow my mouse around and see if I can't change the color of something. So my first step was just to make a box, and I needed that box to be able to move and, and follow my mouse around. So to be able to do that, I did this where I gave it a left and a top of um, this a, a custom property of X and Y, uh, with a default being zero. And I also did a translate of negative 50, negative 50, just because if I don't do that, or we'll come back to that one in a second, actually. But then all I did was just use, um, you know, document mouse move, and I'm just getting the, the movement of my mouse and try putting that to the X and the Y coordinates. So there's nothing complicated here. If you want to look at the code, you can, um, I'll put a link to the finished code pen in the description. 
Uh, but you can see it's like it's not centered on my mouse. So then I can come in with this translate negative 50, negative 50. So then it's centered on the mouse, makes it feel a bit more natural, I guess. I don't know. I just didn't like that I could like hang off in weird ways, <laughs> I guess. Um, really not essential. Um, and then the background of white I wanted to keep, but then I also wanted to give it a blur. So we can do that with a filter blur of say two RAM. You just play around with this number um, and you get a blurry box. And then of course a border radius um, of a 50% and then you get more of a blurry circle instead. And that was, I did this on the before. I don't even know actually. <laughs> I did that on my before because I was experimenting again. Let's see if I can do it without that. We're gonna, um, and if I do that, I don't need the content on there. Uh, so we'll, tr whoa, 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 okay, something. Maybe we'll go back to what we had. Why is that happening? I'm sure there's a good reason for it. Um, I don't know what the good reason is, so we're going to go back to what I had. <laughs> and I don't, I don't want to get into t to debugging right now, but th this one's working, so we'll stick with that version of it. Um, and just really fast, actually, I did put an overflow of hidden on my HTML here, just because if not, when you sort of reach the edges of the page, it will cause some scroll bars. So that's why I had that on there. Normally in most projects, I don't do this. It's not the best practice, but for silly things like this, it's fine. Now, obviously this doesn't do much, but my idea was, and this is sort of what I started with here when I sort of had it working, was I had this white part, which was what's showing me the stuff that's behind it, sort of. It's creating that window into the gradient that I wanted to get to. So that's why first I needed sort of a white blobby thing I could move around. Uh, the other thing is I did want a black background here. We'll talk more about that in a, in a few minutes. Um, and then I needed to have the actual gradient. So because I had this set up on my before, and actually maybe this is where... Let's try it here. We're going to do a little bit of continued experimentation um, where we can put, this is on the cursor itself. Yeah, okay. Um, so I think, there we go. So I can have this conic gradient, um, basically, and I just wanted a whole bunch of colors in the background. So I did a, a conic gradient, and then there was one problem, and it wasn't a problem necessarily, um, but if I didn't put something in the middle, they sort of all meet in a really sharp way. So I just added a radial gradient on top of the conic gradient um, that had sort of filled in that middle bit <laughs> that was right there. Um, and you could, you know, muck around. I, the, actually, the first version of this, I just had a whole bunch of radial gradients sort of all over the place. I just thought the conic gradient would be a little bit easier. Uh, so we can come in with that. And then this is the idea of where I can then come in with a uh, mixed blend mode. And mixed blend modes are super weird. And you'd sort of have to understand how they work. But I've just through experimentation, basically, um, and also knowing that, as I said, that black background is kind of important for this part. Um, if you had a white background, there might be another one that we could use, but uh, this is where the, there's color dodge and color burn. I think color burn was the one that ended up being the correct one. Okay, right, the, the, this is what I had originally tried and I forgot, but this doesn't work because what's happening is the color burn is on the parent, which means the children are also getting the color burn on it. Um, so then this doesn't work anymore. So uh, just because of how I set that up, let's take that off of there. And just for simplicity's purpose, we'll come here and we'll do this. Um, as my after instead. I am using nesting here. We're in regular CSS. Nesting is available here. It was experimentation. I'm not worried about browser support. And um, because this is a pseudo element, we do need the content on here. And I think if we just do that, there we go. It, it comes in and it magically works. So basically, because of the way the blending modes work and the color burn works and everything, the, the color burn um, is something that's focusing on the darker colors. Uh, that are available and it's sort of taking those darker colors and then by having this white thing on top we're sort of getting that extra layer of stuff I don't even actually know to be honest with you but it works um, <laughs> I guess I, I didn't I gave up on like trying to explain how they work because um, I was just doing this experimentation but that was kind of cool and I did go okay if I can do that there's probably another cool thing we can do right so the next thing I did um, was I actually came in and I added this rotate hue um, and let's turn off this color burn for a second so we can understand what this is doing. Uh, and then I just take that animation and I can come on this. And so another fun filter there. And I said we'd get into some cool animation stuff. Uh, so I can put this rotate hue on there and that's going to rotate the hue of my colors. And you can go through a hue of 360 degrees, which means you do the full circle. So every 10 seconds, it's just gonna go through the full loop of colors. And why that's kind of cool is now I don't even have to be moving my cursor anywhere for it to actually start shifting. 
And as you move around, it's always going to seem like a compl like if I'm here now, it's sort of this bluey purple, and then I go around, I move it a bit, and then I get there, and now it's red. So I just thought that was like this fun little extra thing. And again, just through experimentation and finding stuff, and it got me to here. Um, I did say there's a few limitations to what I did here. So if we come up and we take a look, um, my background black. This is important because the color burn is part of like the the darken things. And actually, just just for fun, let's go to color dodge here. This is like the crazy version of it. Color Dodge is like the extreme version. Uh, so sometimes actually with the colors, it can look really good and you get more of like a glow. But it, when you hit some certain like thresholds and colors, it does this, which is a little bit too much. Um, and I actually got stuck at one point in, in playing around with stuff because I was convinced I used Color Dodge, I think because I was looking at this demo uh, and kept going back to that. So I was like, oh, Color Dodge is what I want. And then I was like, this doesn't look like what I'd made and I don't understand. Um, <laughs> why it's not working. So uh, yeah, color burn in this case was just a little bit more relaxed and, and tended to work. Um, I also realized it stopped here because I didn't put infinite on there. Infinite, there we go. It's like my color's not changing anymore because it only did it once. Um, so now we'll, we'll keep on changing forever. Um, and that, yeah, this actually then led to me coming back to this idea um, and we'll get back to the black thing in a second. Sorry, I'm on Tangentville right now. But this did get me coming back to here in a way of like, well, if I can't do it while it's scrolling, maybe I could uh, still take advantage of this um, by doing a animation on there. And I guess you could do like a rotate hue, but that's why I had that large background size on here. And then I just did a thing that would move the background around. So I'm um, just repositioning the background. And let's, there you go, you can sort of see it, it creates this sort of like interesting, weird, moving gradient <laughs> type of effect. And it's not that typical one where usually you see like it spins around. In this case, it's doing something a little bit different. I'd have to play with the values and see if I couldn't get something that looks a little bit better. Um, but basically all we have is that, oh, <laughs> that 100 VH does not need to be on there. But yeah, basically I'm just moving the, the gradient around um, in that space. And by moving it around, we can create some interesting things. And maybe if I did want this to be on something, I've been looking a lot at scroll-based animations. I'm just thinking of this now, but I could probably l somehow, I'm wondering if I could make these custom properties or so something. Yeah, because you can do it with an animation. So I could have something very similar to this, but it's completely based on where my scroll position is uh, instead of being based on just a, a regular animation. So that idea <laughs> comes back and I, I honestly never tried that. Uh, so let's let's do that really fast. And this is honestly on completely <laughs> unplanned um, little tangent we're going on here right now. Um, but I, part of what I wanted to talk about was the importance of experimentation and playing around with these things. And just by doing this now and coming back to it and looking at the animation, that made me think of that. And I think it's a really important thing that sometimes you just experiment and try things that might not make any sense just to see, is it possible? If it's not possible, it doesn't mean it's a dead end. It means that maybe there's other things you could try. Uh, so here, move, I'm gonna take off the time, alternate and infinite. Um, we'll just put linear, I guess, uh, and, and leave it like that. So it should stop animating. And then we can do an animation timeline of, uh, I guess we'll just do scroll for now, um, just to see if this works. <laughs> and so that should, oh, it's, so it's really fast, but you can see like, that's sort of the idea I wanted. I'd have to play with these colors a little bit. Um, oh, it's really fast because I don't have a lot to scroll. If I get, let's just give ourselves P times 10 lorem. Uh, and I'm using scroll. I think view would be better here. I'll put a link to my video where I explored scroll and view timeline. So now I have too much. <laughs> so uh, let's do a view on here instead. Um, and then on the view, so because of that, let's just copy a bunch of this stuff. Um, and then we can come up here and paste. So it will scroll into view. And then so when I get to there, oh, it's a lot more than I expected. Oh, there it is. So as it's in the thing, it's gonna sort of go through the animation that I created there. Um, so yeah, I don't think I'd use it exactly as is right now, but it's a fun little like proof of concept that this idea even works. And there's probably some other stuff you could do with this. And I'm hoping I'm unlocking ideas for you right now. Um, and cause that's sort of something I want to get to is coming back to this, which I really like, I think it's really neat. Um, and we'll go to here before I get to that. And where I said the black background is important is because the way the mix works. If you have like a bright color, you still get this weird thing going on. Um, but even if I came in with like a purple, you start getting some weird effects and it really depends on the color that you use. 
<laughs> so you can see that it's still going and then I still get this happening and it's sort of kind of cool on its own as well. Um, and it just has to do with how color burn works and the darker colors and the lighter colors. And um, it's a little bit beyond me, to be honest. And this is why this whole thing works in the first place, though, I think, is because those outer edges of the glow are lightening up things to the point where I guess we're getting the effect to work. If there's somebody who knows better than me, leave a comment <laughs> and I, I might pin it. Um, but I think it has something to do with that, uh, right? So even like a, I don't know, orange, whatever. You play around with different values and you're going to get different types of looks. Yeah, that, you know, get a little galaxy style thing going on. Anyway, all this to say, like, I think it's a cool thing. Um, I think I just discovered something in a way that I might be able to use it in a more interesting way here, and we could do something a bit more in depth. But this whole video, the purpose of it is more to talk about experiment, have fun. And if you have any ideas of what I can do with this, I'm going to put the original version or the finished version of this uh, with the black background linked down below to this code pen. And what I want you to do is I want you to fork it and do stuff with it and then submit it. And I want to see the different things in different, like, actual use cases people can. And I'm gonna do a video featuring some of the cool ones that people post. Um, so I probably won't be able to post all of them. The one thing is YouTube does not like having uh, external links in YouTube comments. So I'm also gonna put a Google form down below where you can submit your link to your fork code pen. So you just come here all the way down at the bottom. There's a little fork button. Do whatever you want to it. If you can think of something cool, whatever it is, I want to. I want you guys to be experimental, have fun with it. And then as I said, we'll come back in probably a few weeks from now. Um, it might actually be in like February that I actually get around to it just because my January is crazy busy. Um, and then I'll feature some of the, the, the amazing things and forks and other stuff people have done with this. You can do whatever you want with it. There's no limits, have some fun. And I'm looking forward to seeing what you create with it.